there are a lot more aspects to the emotional complex of black people than people give us credit for. But you have to understand something. Anger might be the only recourse people have left. Normally, anger is triggered by the release of your adrenaline. Because when you're a black or brown person living in this society, a lot of the time, your life is fight or flight. Don't know whether you're coming or going. And no, that can be very confusing and frustrating for people. Might not want to be angry, but when you don't have the privilege of being able to rely on law enforcement or any institution to protect you, you have to remain guarded. But none of us want to be angry all the time. That shit is tiring. Even me as a comedian. I chose comedy because I didn't think people would call me angry. But when I started doing comedy, all of a sudden, I'm the angry black guy. And I never was this person until I got into comedy and saw the world on a larger scale. And I always decided to make it a point of principle that I would show different dimensions to the normal aesthetic or stereotype that you see of black people on TV, particularly straight black men. And I hope I can lead by example if I come on this stage and try and be a little bit vulnerable. And I want to do that by not just talking about stuff that pisses me off. Why don't I tell you about some of the things that make me afraid? Right. Here goes. Going black, going vulnerable, going straight male. I, Dane Baptiste, your friend and favorite modest comedian, <laughs> I'm scared of roller coasters. Why am I scared of roller coasters? Have you seen the staff that operate and control roller coasters? <laughs> they are many things, but they are not engineers. <laughs> I think if you pay attention, you will realize that most roller coasters in theme parks are operated by teenagers. And if you ever met a teenager at work or been a teenager at work, you know you don't give a fuckity fuck about your job which I totally understand. You are too old to enjoy a theme park on a superficial level, but when you are a teenager, you're too young to have a proper career because you don't have the experience or qualifications. So most of us end up working in leisure or hospitality or retail, and these jobs are soul-destroying, sitting there at a theme park, watching everybody else have fun in the summertime. What you want to be doing is smoking cheap weed and fingering people. <laughs> you can't finger people in a theme park. That's what fairgrounds are for. <laughs> Have some class. Teenagers do not give a fuck. You ever seen a teenage lifeguard at a water park or a public swimming pool and seen how little of a fuck they give about your life? <clears throat> you can see a great white shark eating a baby and be like, this colonial fish is eating this baby. <laughs> and the teenage lifeguard would just go, The other reason I hate roller coasters is because I'm the oldest male out of my generation of cousins. I love them very much, but because of that, I'm aware that if our dads aren't around, I've got to be the man of the group, and I've got to let my cousins go out together on a roller coaster, and I sit by myself next to a stranger. And you know what's scarier than sitting next to a stranger? Sitting next to a stranger who goes on the roller coasters by their fucking selves. <laughs> now, the final reason I do not like roller coasters is because... You know when you go on a roller coaster, you get off, you go through the gift shop, and they put your pictures up, hoping you buy some merchandise. Now, where I'm from, in South East London, if you look scared in that picture, you are the bitch of the summer. Not the day, not the week, the whole summer. And even years later, when you're trying to get your life back together from that trauma, you'll be tagged in a social media post, and somebody go, remember back in the 90s when you were being a little bitch? So I'm on this roller coaster and the barrier comes down before it kicks off. Now, you ever been in that situation when the barrier comes down and it's tight, but not tight enough? And you're like, if we go upside down, I'll definitely die. So then you try and get some help from the technician. You're like, hey, this ain't tight enough. And he goes, hey! <laughs> so then I think, let me find a responsible adult. And I said, excuse me, sir, this isn't very tight. What about yours? And he's like, you want some licorice, baby? Uh -huh. <laughs> so, the ride begins. And if you've ever been on a roller coaster, you know, they don't even sound safe at the beginning. It's like... And I'm just like, oh my God, I'm gonna die a virgin. 
I'm from South East London. Why would I put myself in deliberate danger? I could have done this at home. <laughs> and that camera's coming up. I don't look like a little bitch because my cousins are here. Then you get to the top and I'm like, oh, fuck me. Why would I do this? Right. But you know, when you're a black person, you got to act tough all the time. So I'm stone faced. Then the ride begins. Hope my cousins don't see me. Kicks off. I'm like, oh shit. I don't want to die. I don't want to die. I don't want to. Stupid. We've all been there. All right. Here's another little fact about myself. It took me many years being comfortable with who I am to reveal to people. We were talking about liquor earlier on. I'm not really a beer and wine person. Um, I guess my drink of choice has a little bit more pizzazz. Um, I, Dane Baptiste, your confidant and big dick modest comedian. <laughs> <laughs> I like cocktails. Yeah, going. I don't tell people. <laughs> but thank you very much. Hey, yeah. I mean, that's still kind of butch, though, but more like a I'm a top kind of yeah. <laughs> Drink it up, little daddy. <laughs> it's very hard for me to start a preference for something with cock, being from Southeast London. Um, but I like them, and I discovered my love of cocktails. You know, at gay clubs. A friend of mine introduced me to a two for one happy hour just there in Soho. And I was like, no wonder gay is a synonym for happy. These drinks are fucking delicious. If you are a straight man, drink cocktails, okay? Because then you still get fucked up and you don't smell like a sewer. Mm -mm. Love cocktails. I find them delicious. I find them fruity. I find them scrumptious. And you know why that's so significant? Ask yourselves as an audience, you ever even heard a six foot one black man use the word scrumptious before? <laughs> that's how much they mean to me. You see there white guys in the room, there's words that I can't use too. <laughs> Cause I'll be judged. Some of you are like laughing along. Some of you are like, what word? You know what word. <laughs> and this is an excuse that black people aren't having anymore. I heard a rapper do it. Well, do you do everything you see on TV or online? I saw two girls in one cup. I don't go into Starbucks <laughs> trying to find white girls with pumpkin spice lattes to shit in. <laughs> also, you have to understand, which we all understand, that within personal communities or in personal groups, you might use derogatory language, ironically, as a term of endearment. In the same way that you might love your wife or partner, but in the bedroom, you call her a dirty, dirty slut. <laughs> doesn't mean I can do that shit. And the same thing for that word. So you want to use that word, let me call your wife a fucking whore. How about that? Anyway. <laughs> scrumptious. Now, scrumptious is a great word to use to describe something you like, but it's not something that a straight black man can normally use, which is not great for my career. Because if I can't use a word like scrumptious, how the fuck am I going to do Bake Off? I want to do Bake Off, but I got act tough because I'm a black straight man. And they're like, hey, Dane, has that red velvet cupcake? And I'm like, oh, it's good. Yeah, it's all right, still. Yeah, decent, decent. <laughs> this is decent, still. Pushing pee in that, this cupcake right here, you know. As you can see, the icing is bright, like a gunshot from my strap. The sponge is warm and moist, like a stripper's pussy. You can't talk that way on Bake Off. They won't ask you back. Now, that all was some silly shit, but I told you that because I really feel like, what else can I do? Like, I literally come on stage and make people laugh for a living and people still call me aggressive and angry. And me, as a black person, and whether or not I've been given this permission, I'm really asking on behalf of my community, when is it gonna be enough? What's it gonna take? Even when you had black people in the England team, when they got to their first final, in how many years, it still wasn't enough. We live in a world where people are still throwing bananas on a pitch. You think if I got the wrong estimate from Tony, my plasterer, I would throw a Ginsters in his face? No, I wouldn't. <laughs> when is it gonna be enough? Even one of the staples of British culture, the royal family, we had a black duchess. 
And she weren't just any woman, she was an accomplished actress, a self-made millionaire, philanthropist, and it still wasn't enough. Even though she picked the ginger one, still <laughs> wasn't enough. Just like, and I mean that not against ginger people, but just like Hermione did with Ron Weasley. Of all the people to pick in a secret boarding school with inbred people, she picked the most humble one. And people still hate like she's got some problem with her morals. Meanwhile, Charles married his fucking side chick. That's who Camilla was, by the way. She was there even when Diana was. You heard it here, maybe first. <laughs> That's right, secret societies and that. Still not enough, even in the, our best friends, the US, somehow managed to get a black president, well, black enough, cause he's mixed race, but black enough for America to be president. And even with Barack Obama, Barack is not just any guy. He graduated from Harvard, top of his class, went to Harvard Law School, never had a scandal, and it still wasn't good enough. One of the most accomplished black men you would ever meet was replaced by a man who smells like cheeseburgers and Russian prostitute urine and <laughs> has been bankrupt three times. And you know, he's a diplomat and you know, Megan is a duchess. Well, I'm just a comedian and I'm tired of being fucking dignified about it. And I'll tell you this for free. You don't want me as a president because I'm not that classy. If I found out I was leaving the White House for Donald Trump, me and Michelle would have fucked in every room in that house. The only way it would still be the White House is when you see me busting nuts all over the curtains, the cutlery, just leaving the sheets just right there, busting on the carpet, just because I can. And as I was walking out for that inauguration, I would look Donald Trump in the eye and be like, hey, I shat in your house. How about that?